The U-233 canisters we'll be processing in hot cells will be much higher in radiological dose than those processed in glove boxes. Because of this, they will need to be packed into lead shielded carriers in our Building 3019 storage facility. The overpack and carrier weigh thousands of pounds, so a forklift is used to transport the canister to Building 2026 where processing will take place. Once at 2026, the overpack is removed. The carrier will then be moved into place in front of the hot cell portal to prepare for canister entry. A special lifting device is used to lift the carrier that envelops the trunnions on its side. This special lifting device also allows the carrier to be rotated once it's lifted and laid on its side onto a cradle attached to the hot cell portal. The cradle is lined up perfectly with the canister sized port. It is then pushed to the port and using a tiny opening in the bottom of the carrier, the canister is pushed out of the carrier through the port and into the hot cell. Hot cells are ideal for processing because they provide significantly more shielding than glove boxes. From a safe distance, operators will use mechanical arm manipulators to handle radioactive material. So now that the canister is safely in the hot cell, operators will use manipulators to pick it up and cut it open. They'll remove a container holding U-233 from the canister and then dispose of the canister in a debris drum underneath the hot cell pan. The U-233 will then be divided into batches to be transferred to the neighboring processing cell. This is done by placing the batch into a sliding door on the side of the division cell that goes through to the processing cell. Just like in the glove boxes, the U-233 will be mixed with nitric acid creating urinal nitrate. It's pumped through the transuranic column where the resin inside captures transuranic elements to separate it from the urinal nitrate. After that, it's pumped through the thorium column and thorium is separated from the urinal nitrate. The U-233 is singled out now in a dump bottle after passing through the columns. We'll be down blending it further though by circulating pre-made depleted urinal nitrate through piping in the hot cells. This circulation generates pressure that will suck the urinal nitrate out of the hot cell into the recirculation system and through to the waste tanks in another area of building 2026 where the depleted urinal nitrate originated. Adding processing waste to the depleted urinal nitrate creates downblended urinal nitrate. Once a tank reaches a specified amount of waste, the contents will be solidified. To do this, a fill head is lowered on top of it and cement is transferred from a silo outside of building 2026. Thousands of pounds of cement will be transferred into the waste tank and mixing blades inside will mix the waste with the cement until it is a solid piece of concrete. Now that it's prepared for shipment, it just needs to be moved onto a shipping truck. The waste tanks sit on air pallets that will allow operators to move these massive structures weighing tens of thousands of pounds. Because of this, a tank can easily be moved outside of building 2026. A crane outside will then lift the waste tank off the air pallet and place it into a shipping cast on a transportation truck. The U-233 waste is then transported to a disposal site. That's only half the process though. We still want to get that thorium so it can be used for cancer treatment research. To get it off the resin column, a different concentration of nitric acid is run through the column, releasing the thorium from the resin. The thorium and nitric acid solution is then pumped into an evaporator that is heated until the nitric acid evaporates away, leaving just the thorium from the column remaining. This used to be our last step when we extracted thorium in glove boxes, but we've since developed additional methods to separate even more of the uranium from the thorium product. So nitric acid is put into the evaporator flask, making a concentrated form of the thorium and nitric acid solution. Then it's pumped into a new column, the thorium concentrate column. Thorium is also attracted to the resin in this column, and the nitric acid with small amounts of uranium passes through and is downblended. To get the thorium off this column, hydrochloric acid is added to release the thorium. That solution is then pumped back into the evaporator. Once again, the solution is heated until the hydrochloric acid is evaporated, leaving thorium with an even smaller amount of uranium remaining. Hydrochloric acid is added again, and that solution is pumped through one last column, the thorium polishing column. This time, uranium is captured by the column. So the solution can be pumped to the evaporator. One last time, the solution is heated, leaving just the thorium product. This is, by and large, the only available thorium-229 in the world. So the work we do here has the potential to make an incredible positive impact on cancer treatment research.